Hey everybody, and welcome back to Investment Honey, where we talk about various crypto projects. Before we begin, I want to let you know that I am not your financial advisor. I do not provide financial advice on the channel, and I don't even encourage you to invest. But what I am going to do is share with you my own personal opinion and views on the projects discussed on the channel. So before we go ahead and we get going, you know, with this project, which is called Lucky Roo, I do want to let you know that if you are interested in supporting the channel, um, I do provide information, you know, for you to be able to go ahead and do that in the description below. So if you recall, you know, if you have been with me, you know, and with this channel. Uh, since the beginning, um, Lucky Roo was actually like one of the first, very first videos that was ever done on this channel. Okay, so we're talking going back to January 20th, you know, when I started the channel, um, 2022. Okay, and this video on Lucky Roo, the first one that I ever did, or one of the first videos I ever did, was published on January 21st, so a day after the channel was established. So um, I came across, you know, some information that, um, you know, uh, led me to understand that, one, this token still hadn't launched. Two, uh, this token is going to be doing a fair launch, um, you know, this month. You know, so um, I wanted to go ahead and do an update, you know, to this project to, you know, just let everybody in the community, you know, know that uh, this project is going to be having an upcoming fair launch. So. Um, I'll leave the link, you know, to the initial video that was done. You can see, you know, I think it's interesting just to kind of go ahead and go back and see how how I did, you know, videos at that point versus how I do videos now. But either way, um, they did have an audit, you know, done on this project, you know, it passed with issues. Now, understand that Brew Labs, another project that's been discussed on the channel, um, did build the contract. Certic actually, you know, audited the contract. So as far as like any issues, you know, going on with the contract, you know, they got a major severity issue, centralization, you know, related risks. This has been acknowledged by the team. Another major severity issue, centralized, centralized risk in ad liquidity. Um, this has also been acknowledged by the team. So these issues have been acknowledged but not resolved, okay? And then a medium severity issue, the last address and what they're calling token holders map will never win first place. Now, um, there's also additional information, you know, that I'm going to leave in the description um, that has been highlighted, you know, by the auditing company that you can read through um, in regards, you know, to what they're saying, you know, concerning these severity issues. I will leave the full audit details, you know, in the description for you as well. As far as pre-sale, you know, there was no private sale or pre-sale on this token. Um, when they do fair launch, the fair launch is actually going to take place on two chains. I'm going to leave a link to the telegram where you can see, you know, the information, the details concerning that. The team is Photodocs. I haven't been able to go ahead and find a certificate of KYC on this one. Um, it doesn't mean they don't have one. I just haven't been able to locate it. Now, if the team happens to come across the video and they want to share that information, you know, so because I obviously believe, you know, in the accuracy of information, just because I can't find it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So if the team happens to come across the video and they want to share that information, I'm always receptive to engaging with teams. You know, I simply believe there just should be more collaboration between comp content creators and, and uh, you know, owners and devs and teams of crypto projects. You know, so I'm all about that collaboration. You know, so, um, so yeah, they can always go ahead and reach out to me, you know, whether it's by email or leaving a comment in the, uh, in the comment section. You know, in regards to you know, any information concerning the KYC, should they actually you know already have a certificate uh, that's available? Now, um, let's see here. So, as far as concerns and red flags for me on this one, it's going to be just the audit issues and uh, you know the issue about the KYC certification. All right. So, um, and this is going to be just a quick video to go ahead and you know basically just make you aware that you know, hey, this token, even though it was one of the first ones done on the channel. Um, it hasn't launched, no pre-sale, no private sale, and they have an upcoming fair launch, and it's going to be on two chains. Now, taking a look, you know, at, you know, their, uh, their documentation here, um, we're going to go ahead and just go through it real quick, you know, and highlight, you know, a couple of things that I want to, I typically like to highlight, and that's going to be on their tokenomics and, um, and so forth. So, we can see, you know, what they've got going on in terms of the information, you know, here in their documentation. Um, I think that, you know, what they've done in terms of it, their document, their white paper, white paper, you know, is, it's very good, you know, so I do like, you know, how this is all laid out. So we see here that we've got, you know, their roadmap, you know, so we can see um, some stages here, stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four, you know, so we can see here in stage one, the white paper, 
the audit from Brew Labs, um, Certec audit. Now I haven't actually seen the details concerning a Brew Labs audit, you know. So um, just I'll just be aware of that if they've got that information, they can certainly go ahead and you know send me some information so that I can go ahead and take a look at that as well. Um, a thousand holders. You guys know that I don't believe in having and putting you know holder counts you know in uh, white papers in roadmaps. You know I, I just don't see the point because at the end of the day. You know, every project wants to grow their token holders. Every project wants to grow how many people are in their community and every project wants to grow their market cap. It doesn't matter what project you are looking at. Every project wants to grow in those three areas. So to go ahead and list these aspirational numbers in a roadmap um, doesn't make any sense to me because you may or may not get there. But since everybody knows that you want to go ahead and do it, like why, why list it at all? It's the same thing for listing a coin macro cap and coin gecko. It's just not needed. Every project, you know, knows that they want to go. It. Those are milestones. Every project wants to get there. Now, and then in terms of listing, you know, um, you guys have heard me talk about the fact that I think there's no point in stating that you're listing on coin macro cap and coin gecko. Why? Because you can't control when you actually get listed there. So unless you're already pre-listed, you know, then um, you would just indicate on your roadmap that you know, hey, you know, that you're going to get pre-listed, you know, maybe for whatever reason. Um, so you can put that there, and then when you achieve that, you know, fine, you know. But obviously, that's going to be something pre-launch, right? So, and most projects that know that they're going to go ahead and get pre-listed, they'll tell you in their community they're going to get pre-listed, and they do get pre-listed. Now, um, beyond that, let's get back to why you shouldn't state listing on CMC and CoinGecko. Because you don't control when you get listed. You can control when you submit the application. So if you say that you're going to go ahead and list in stage one and you don't get listed, what happens? It's actually kind of misleading information, in my personal opinion, um, because after you submit the application, CoinMarketCap might not list you for days. They might not list you for weeks. They might not list you for months. I have seen projects not get listed for months after submitting their application. So that's the reason why I go ahead and tell you guys, they should project more and more projects, you know, and I've seen, you know, more projects go ahead and do this. We don't see a ton of them do it, but we do see some um, state that they're submitting the application. Why? Because when you submit the application, that's something you can completely dictate on your own. If you say you're not submitting the application until stage two, and that stage two is going to be, you know, in whatever month you dictate it's going to be, then everybody in the community knows that you submitted the application or are going to be submitting the application then, okay? And then you can program it in the Rose bot and say that, you know, hey, if anybody wants to ask about CMC, the Rose can automatically be told to go ahead and just spit out the information. You've already submitted the application. Here's the application number. And now you're just waiting on CMC and CoinGecko to list you. So that's my rant there. Uh, NFTs and NFT staking, begin development on the gambling, gambling platform, marketing through influencers, established part-time social media team, weekly AMA video chats on Draw Night. Now, I do love projects that do weekly AMAs because I think communication is something that, you know what, hey, more projects just don't do enough of. Brew Labs is one of those projects where they are known for doing constant AMAs and voice chats, you know, with their community. And that is a good signal in terms of any project because it shows that, you know what, hey, you you know that you need to stay engaged with the community if you want your community to stay, to stay engaged with your project. And yes, that does take a lot of time, but it is it does separate projects, you know, that really can stand, you know, the weather through bear markets, you know, and through low trade volume um, and stay alive. Because, again, you've got to continuously engage, you know, with the community, let them know what's going on in terms of development. You know, so and you don't always see that with a ton of projects. You just don't. So I think it's a good signal for me personally, you know, in regards to this project that they are doing weekly AMAs. Uh, stage two, register corporate you know, entity, apply for gaming license, 5,000 hold, you guys know. Okay, so they don't need these two. Uh, decentralized exchange listings, extensive marketing campaign, TikTok influencers, full-time social media team, weekly AMA video chats on Draw Night. Okay, so stage three, you know, again, they don't need these two. Website redesign, strategies, influencer partnerships, social media campaigns, and the weekly EMA video chats. A release slot machine in stage four. 20, okay, these, they don't need these. Explore more casino gaming possibilities, additional marketing campaigns, uh, social media influencers, partnerships, and weekly AMAs here. So that goes through, you know, uh, the roadmap, you know, here. We're going to go ahead and take a quick look, you know, at the main page, you know, here in a minute. And then I'll close out the video with just some additional feedback, you know, in regards to the roadmap. 
All right, so we see here on the tokenomics, you know, so we see 40% going to liquidity. That's going to be locked for five years. 35% to burn, 17.5% to reserve, 6% to development team, one year vested, 1.5% uh, going to partnership, one year vested, Phantom Works. Okay, and then we get blockchain transparency here, transparency here, um, and that closes out, you know, the uh, their, their documentation here. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll scroll through just to go ahead and see, you know, what's going on in terms of, you know, any changes they've made to their main page. Um, so we see here, um, Lucky Brew Holders airdrop. Okay, um, we see the NFTs, which I think the NFTs look really, really super cool. I love the artwork, you know, there. Uh, we see photo docs, you know, uh, team members, you know, as I mentioned before. And then we see, you know, some badges, you know, for people or entities that are connected to the project. All right, and weekly live events will be hosted to engage with holders and to promote Lucky Roo. All right, and then, you know, we see here in the different stages, you know, of their project, you know, so, and the main thing that we see here that's different, you know, from what we saw in, in regards to um, what we have here in the documentation when we look at their, at the roadmap is that they're checking things off here that they've already completed, but not in the documentation. So, and I personally believe that there needs to be consistency between the two. Um, granted, you know, their main website page, you know, which is ultimately their advertisement, that's where the lion's share of the traffic is going to be. However, for those that do go ahead and do decide to take a look at the white paper, it would be good to see that consistency between the two, that they are checking things off in both areas, okay, to indicate what's been completed. Now, uh, and I like, you know, the subtle um, element here where it's like, you know, hey, yes, everything's checked. But they but they make it live, you know, like a live check with this blue, you know, glow around it. I think this is this is excellent, you know, design work, you know. So um, so yeah, and we see that there's a number of different things that, that are not checked off, right? However, as we go through, okay, and we see everything they they they, they want to do, what we don't see, you know, is anything that indicates what's currently in process, you know. So and not enough projects do this. They need to be indicating what's in process, what's pending, and what's ongoing. I think those things do go ahead and communicate, you know, to people that haven't necessarily made it into their social community, but are just maybe finding the product, their, their project, you know, through the website. So this is an opportunity to communicate with those people. And that may be the difference between them taking that extra step to jump into the social community. Okay. And a lot of projects do not take the opportunity and i do see the roadmap as an opportunity to communicate what's going on with the development of the project you can be doing weekly amas but you're doing that with with your community that's already in your social you're not doing that with the people that are visiting your roadmap visiting your website that may not even have ever stepped into your social community so this gives you another opportunity to go ahead and bring on board more people that are that never made it to your social but are finding your website, okay? So um, what's pending, what's ongoing, and what's currently in process? That's something that needs to be indicated, you know, here on this roadmap, okay? And then, you know, as we go back, you know, between these two roadmaps, okay? And again, that consistency in terms of what's indicating those things needs to be shown on both. We don't get anything in terms of timelines. We get stage one, two, three, and four, okay? We get the same thing here in the white paper, What's, what months constitute, you know, stage one, two, and three, and four? Is this a 2022 project? Is this going into 2023 and beyond? We have no idea because none of that information is indicated in the roadmap, you know, on either one, you know, so that's, timelines are important. So, I mean, that needs to be, in my personal opinion, you know, communicated, you know, looking at the roadmap. Um, the other thing is that when we look at stage four, we don't see anything that indicates, you know, whether you're done, you know, with development on the project or whether you're going to be doing an extension on the roadmap. We don't get any of that information, you know, in either version or iteration of the roadmap, whether we're talking about uh, the version in your light paper, white paper, or the one on the main page. So that's just my, you know, my feedback in regards to uh, the roadmap that they've got. But otherwise, I mean, it looks like a good roadmap. So, um, and then, you know, keep going on. We see token distribution. So we've already taken a look at that information. Um, we see here information in regards to taxes. They're going to tax every transaction at 8%, breaking down to 3% going to liquidity, 1% to treasury, 1% to the airdrop wallet, 1% into 
Um, uh, 1% to the airdrop. Let's see here. Did I do that wrong? Sorry about that, guys. 3% to the marketing wallet, 1% to liquidity, 1% to treasury, 1% to the airdrop wallet, and 2% to reflections. Sorry about that. All right. So that's on taxes. And moving forward, we see how to buy. We get an FAQ here at the footer of the website. And that'll do it for me on uh, this particular project. So again, they're going to be fair launching you know, this month, you know, before the end of the month. Um, the best way to go ahead and stay up to date on what's going on with the project is to definitely jump into the social. Um, and as always, guys, I mean, I don't encourage you guys to invest ever. You know, I'm never going to tell you that, you know, this uh, project's going to be the next 5x, 10x, 100 or 1000x. You're never going to hear that. But I am going to tell you all day long, please, 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 your goal should be to get informed. So beyond this video content, there are other content creators, I'm sure, that are talking about Lucky Roo. Make sure that you engage with those, you know, channels you know, with that information so that you can develop a more complete picture of what's going on with the product beyond what I share with you, you know, here on this, you know, you know on this channel. Okay, we go ahead and we expose you to different projects and then I put it in your hands to go ahead and do your own information gathering so that you can put together a complete picture for your own evaluation and assessment on a project that should further inform, you know, whether you lean into a project, you know, and what that level of participation may look like, you know, on your end. Because obviously, the more you understand about the details and mechanics of a project, it should provide a better experience for you in terms of engaging with various projects in crypto. So um, that's going to do it for me. You know, as always, I appreciate you guys continuing to support the channel um, and uh, be here with me on this journey as we continue to try to grow the channel. But, um, you know, I can't do that without you. So if you're getting any value out of this channel and you think someone else may be able to do the same, please support the channel by sharing the channel through your various, you know, social media, you know, avenues and, um, you know, as always, I just appreciate you guys taking time to engage with this content here. We're a small channel and there's so many other channels out there that are so much larger, but yet you take time out of your day to engage with a small channel like this one. So thank you so much for that. If you're, again, if you're interested in supporting the channel, uh, we do give you a way to go ahead and do that through the tip jar in the uh, description below. But with that said, that's going to do it for me. Um, this does look like, you know, my personal opinion, you know, a, uh, you know, a, a good project, you know, but at the end of the day, no matter how good a project looks, it comes down to to the team, you know, and the talent and the minds behind the team, you know, and their willingness to go ahead and push, you know, the project, regardless of what's going on in the community, you know, um, can they do that? You know, so as I like to say, time will tell and we will see in regards to the Lucky Root project. But thanks so much for watching. I'll leave the links relevant to the project in the description below. And you all, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the day.